Eleven asks, which of the following compounds is capable of hydrogen bonding? Now, remember, hydrogen bonding is a certain type of dipole-dipole interaction that can occur between FH, OH, and NH bonds. So a molecule that can hydrogen bond must have one of those groups present in it. Now, here we have everything in this sort of condensed formula notation. So I think it is going to be best if we can draw these out so we can really see the exact connectivity between the central atom and everything that's going on. So let's take that first one. We have a central nitrogen atom, and then the nitrogen is going to have three groups. So we have an H, and then we have two methyl groups. Now, B is NCH3-3. It's a trimethylamine, so we have all methyl groups. All of the three groups around the nitrogen are methyls. Then we have CH3COCH3. This can be a little tricky when we go from the condensed formula to the line notation because CO seems a little ambiguous. But when we have a situation like that, we have a carbonyl. So that is acetone. And then D says CH3COOCH3. So this also can be a little confusing, but when we have that situation, we know that we have an ester. So CH3 is the methyl there, and then CO is the carbonyl, and then another O is that other ester oxygen before another methyl group. So remember, for hydrogen bonding, we need FH, OH, or NH bonds. One of those groups need to be present in order for hydrogen bonding to be possible. Where do we have such a group? That is right here. This is the only compound that has one of those groups. We have a nitrogen bonded to a hydrogen atom. That's an NH group that qualifies for being capable of hydrogen bonding. These ones do not. They all have NC or CO or CC or these other types of bonds that do not qualify. So the answer is going to be A, this molecule there. And then going back to these two molecules, let's just make sure it's very clear what these represent. So these are methyls at the end there. This is a methyl right here. This is a methyl right here. And when we're talking about these groups, these are called functional groups. So this is a carbonyl. This particular carbonyl is present in a functional group called a ketone. That's when we have a C double bond O with more carbon material on either side. This is something called an ester when we have C double bond O and then another oxygen and then alkyl beyond that. And so we're going to learn a lot more about these as we proceed through organic chemistry. These functional groups are very important in terms of understanding how a molecule behaves, how it reacts.